Welcome back to the Sharp Sports Report. I am Kellen. I'm here with Alec. I am here with Brandon. And it is the Monday after Selection Sunday. It is the Monday after one of the craziest player championships we have seen. We'll dive into that later. Today's main focus is indeed the NCAA tournament bracket. We have a different format for recording today's episode. We are hoping that you are seeing what we are seeing as we are currently looking at the men's tournament bracket today we'll be filling out the west and we'll be filling out the east the left side of the bracket we will be giving our takes on each and then we'll do a majority vote rule and see what happens there um don't forget to join our little group on espn you can find it by looking up the sharp sports report don't forget to follow us on instagram and twitter and please share we're, we're enjoying having you here. We want you to add more people, and we want to have more conversations with anyone we can. We want your intake and input on what's going to happen in college basketball as much as you want ours. So I think we got to start with Gonzaga, Georgia State. This is a pretty uh, up forward um, game. It's a 116. Uh, Georgia State plays some great defense, but I think we're all going to choose the same team. No qualms there. Give me the Zach. I'm not even going to give you an argument. So Gonzaga moves on. No, I think it'll be a close game. And by that, I mean like 15 points. It'll be a 15-point win for the Zags. Georgia State just plays really good suffocating defense. And we have discussed <laughs> that we don't trust uh, Chet Hol- Holgram when it comes to playing against physical opponents. Is Georgia State the team several years ago that beat Michigan State? Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So, so it's nice to see them back in there. Now we all, we'll move on to the next matchup in the west which is boise state and memphis i've heard many things from my friends from different uh, espn analysts and just thought many different things from myself i personally am going to go with the memphis tigers brandon go ahead dude i'll I'll let you go i have many theories on this game i memphis if you're looking talent of both these teams memphis like is is kind of a value pick in the bracket because Memphis's talent is off the charts good. Um, my only thing with this game is um, historically eight and nine matchups have proven to be like, I think the eight wins 50.9% of the time and the nine wins the other percent of the time. I'm actually going to go with Boise state here only again, only because I think uh, Memphis is still a flawed team, although they're starting to pick it up. Um, Boise State has a freshman that I watched in one game this year, and I don't think it was by happenstance. Um, hell of a sharpshooter. He seems like the, the player um, that would get hot in a game like this. So I'm trying to find out his name here. It's very obscure. Um, but I, I've stated over, over the course of this podcast that uh, there's always just teams that advance have a dude. And while Memphis has the, the greater talent, and they do have several really good players, this guy's just a baller. <clears throat> Again, I'm trying to find his, his damn name. Well, Alec, as you do that, your seed fact there, I actually have the exact fact from ESPN, and it's that eight seeds are 71 and 73 against nine seeds. So nine seeds actually have the nine higher seed. advantage. Okay. And, okay. Uh, but, but, but last year, they did win three of the four matchups. Alec, are, 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 are you thinking of Marcus Shaver Jr.? No, I am thinking of Tyson Dagenhart. He averages about 10 points a game. Beautiful name. That is a Cinderella story player type name right there. It's, it's, it's a, a Farouk name. name. Yeah, he so, averages nine points a game, shoots about 40% from three. He can get hot. All right, so there's actually a lot that is going into this game. Um, I actually did a lot of research. I This whole – like past 24, 28 hours, I've been doing research on most of these games. Boise State's head coach, listen to this, used to be the assistant to Mark Pugh and Gonzaga. So let's say Boise State wins. They play Gonzaga next round. But the issue is Boise is one of the worst free throw shooting teams in the country, shooting at 68% as a team. That will kill you in a close game. And the reason why I say that, Memphis is a deep and very physical rebounding team um the only thing that their issue is they turn over the ball quite a bit but at the same time that Jalen Duran the center for Memphis is an absolute man child 
Um, he's almost like the Oscar Shibwe of the AAC, very physical, can get offensive board. I think he's the second leader in the country, but just under five offensive boards. I'm going to go with uh, Penny Hardaway and the boys and Memphis Tigers to win this one. I just think it's going to be too much of a physical matchup. Um, I think it's going to be a close game. Boise State has only had close games all year long. I just think that free throw shooting is going, I think, going to kill them, honestly. 68% is absolutely atrocious. I mean, just disgusting. You, you, you can't expect to make a run with 65% shooting, uh, especially when the game comes down to the last two minutes. You're go- they're going to foul you, and you're going to have to shoot. You've got to hope you got to make them. And Memphis also has a suffocating defense uh, since January 20th-ish. They like their, uh, since then, they've uh, held their opponents at 38% shooting. That's pretty nasty. And, and if Boise State can't get it from the field and they're going to struggle to get from the line, I'm going to lean towards the Memphis Tigers, but I could definitely see Boise State coming out with the victory here. And it's it's the 8-9 games, people. I mean, the, the when you're picking the, this game, it really is you might as well flip a quarter unless you have inside info on on something in the game. As, as Kellen just pointed out, 73 and 71, it's always going to be tight. It is. In, it, it's, it's yeah, and, and so we, we are confirming Memphis Tigers is our, yep. is our collective pick here. Next yep. game, the 23-9 uh, and nine, five seed UConn Huskies versus the 26-6 and six New Mexico State squad. Um, you know what? I'm going to let someone else start out here because I had done the last two. New Mexico All right, State Alec. has a great offense. They have a yes, great – Yes, they do. They have They're a fantastic. great <laughs> offense, and it scares the living daylights out of me. The, this – Again, historically speaking, now let's go to like the the most one of the most often like large upsets is the 12 5 game. It's always the trendy, you know, upset game to pick. This game is a scary game for UConn, although I will say it being in Buffalo, New York is probably going to be the difference. Um, UConn, I think, has more talent, um, got good big men, they play hard. And I, I think UConn's going to take this one, it's going to be close. But I think if UConn gets past this, they could present a problem down the bracket. So I agree with you. Just not to the point of UConn winning. Oh, man. I think, honestly, I think New Mexico State is one of my favorites to be a Cinderella team in this year's tournament. Just like you said, they are so good offensively. They're damn good. Like efficiently shooting. They just do everything correct. And when you find a team like that and they're staying hot, I mean, it's kind of hard to cool them down. But what does worry me, though, is just like you said, it's in Buffalo, home court advantage for the Huskies. But I'm saying New Mexico State wins this one, and they're a Cinderella team. I'm telling you, watch out. Sweet 16 possibilities for the Aggies. Well, I'm going to have to disagree with you both, even though we're going to choose New Mexico State. I'm just going to give you my opinion. New Mexico State is is their entire team and offense is dominated by their two guards, Teddy Allen and great name, Serge Jabari Rice. Fantastic name. I love it. I kind of want to choose them just because of that. But UConn dominates the offensive boards, 6'9 forward, Adama Senogo. And he's a they're fantastic. And they do an excellent job defensively. uh, And they don't allow their opponents to shoot the three ball well. So. I could see an upset here. I'm going to go UConn. Um, and I'm not going to – I'm not leaning towards the upset here because of the next game, uh, which we have as the Arkansas Razorbacks versus Vermont. Hey, the Catamounts are no team to just slouch on. Let me just tell you that right now. Every time they're in the tournament, they're always fighting, always, every year. Just it's not going to be enough. Arkansas, I think, wins by like 20 in this one. Arkansas looks good. J.D. J. J. Note is going to be the difference maker. The only thing that worries me about Arkansas's offense is they do not shoot the three ball well. But J.D. Note can run the floor and get to the basket at will. So, yes, Arkansas by 15 plus. Um, I'm going to have to stop you right there, Brandon, because Joe Lenardi, Jay Billis, and LaFonzo Ellis agree with me. 
Vermont is going to win this game because their offense, they're just shooting three point in general is insane. They want a five spread offense. Everyone is out on the wings because everyone can shoot. They don't turn the ball over. Um, and they rebound a fish. Like they have the greatest defensive rebound or third greatest defensive rebounding efficiency of all time at 81%. Arkansas shoots horribly. They get most of their points off of turnovers and rebounds. And like I just said, Vermont doesn't turn the ball over and they don't give up rebounds and they shoot insanely. Well, it's a bunch of white guys. I'm going to take Vermont. So I got engaged this fall news in my life. Congrats. Congrats. And the, the place I took my now fiance to ask her to be my wife was Vermont. And I went to Burlington, Vermont for a day. I got to go on campus. And let me tell you, basketball season had not even started. And there were catamount basketball flags everywhere. Vermont's going to win this game, mainly for the reasons Kellen said. Their motion offense is something that Arkansas is going to have a tough time with. I just... I hate the fact that, like, once the bracket came out yesterday, I immediately looked at this game and thought, that's, that's one of them. But now everyone else is saying that's going to be one of them, so it probably won't. But I'm going to stick to Vermont because that is where I asked my soon-to-be wife to marry me. That's two to three. Let's move the catamounts forward. Wait, Kellen, hold on. After you click Vermont, I thought you guys agreed on UConn, not New Mexico State. Yeah, UConn. Oh, my bad. I thought Alec picked New Mexico State. That is No, no, not picking against Danny Hurley. Are you kidding me? That is my that is my fault there. Now on to the next matchup. We have uh, Alabama versus the play in Rutgers or Notre Dame. I think we'll start with the Rutgers Notre Dame game right now. I have expressed my love for Rutgers, their ability to show up in big time games. Notre Dame has wilted over the past five or six games especially with that loss of Virginia Tech. But I don't want to knock them for the Virginia Tech game because Virginia Tech went on a crazy run. It's just Rutgers has a knack for this kind of stuff of just coming out of nowhere and blowing out their opponents. So I'm going to take the Scarlet Knights um, in a blowout. Alec, you go ahead. I will let you go, and then I will <laughs> end this one. I, I'm taking Rutgers because, again, a- after watching my Hawkeyes play Rutgers several times and watching them play in Big Ten, they get – in your grill like they are in your pocket defensively and they like playing that way the only thing that's going to stop Rutgers in this game would be if it's always interesting to see how the game's going to be called I was telling you guys when I was playing them first half was called to where Rutgers was allowed to play their style of basketball really physical but when the game isn't called that way it, they have a difficult time I think as Kellen said Geo Baker, um, Ron Harper Jr., those are tournament guys right there. They, will, they are not afraid of the big moment. They've hit plenty of big shots in their career. I just don't see Notre Dame physically being able to match up with, with a team like Rutgers who's super, super hungry for this chance. Like They, they are a dangerous team, and, and honestly, they have a decent little draw to possibly go on a run. So I'm going to take Rutgers in this game. This absolutely kills me as a Notre Dame fan. Like, it does. Like, they were doing so well. And then Virginia Tech, I mean, congratulations to them. They just ran through the ACC tournament like it was nobody's business. But just like you said, Rutgers are very physical in your face. They will not stop until you just pretty much say, all right, we're done. And that's what Notre Dame pretty much does. But the only positivity that I have going into this game is if Notre Dame can start out hot shooting the ball from deep, it will be tough for Rutgers to stop because when Dane Goodwin is on and Ryan Cormack, and then if just like you said prior to the – or earlier on in the season, Alec, if Prentice Hub can be like that third scorer, it's tough. It's very tough to stop Notre Dame. But I think Rutgers I, – I, I, don't, I mean, it sucks. They're playing in Dayton. I wish – I feel like that's a little bit of home court advantage for Notre Dame since it's so close. I, I will say from going to the Notre Dame-Iowa State game several years ago, uh, I believe back in 2012, Notre Dame had a good team. Notre Dame didn't hardly have anybody there. So there, yeah, there's, I don't expect them to have people there for this game. If anything, Rutgers is going to travel. Because, I mean, they I, are I would, Yeah, I would love to say Notre Dame wins this game. I just don't think it's going to happen. And just like you said, I think Rutgers have the roster to have a great run in this tournament. I – 
the the only solace or the only hope I give Notre Dame is actually if Prentice Hub ends up being the leading scorer. Because what that means is he's going to have the ball at the end of the shot clock, and he's he's going to have to hit, like, crazy contested shots. Because Rutgers gets out outside the three-point arc. They are not going to let you catch and shoot. I'm not kidding. They are in your pockets around ball screens, everything. They are not giving you any separation. I don't see anybody on Notre Dame's roster other than Prentice Hub who's able to kind of create a little bit of magic for as good as Blake Wesley is. I don't know if he's that kind of shooter yet in his career. You know, coach Bray, we know you listen. We know you take in everything we say, start J.R. Knezny and you'll win by 40. Just saying. <laughs> um, so it's a unanimous vote that Rutgers yeah. is winning the game. So that is. are we just giving them the vote to beat Alabama just because I, I don't even know how Alabama got in. I didn't think they were that good this year. They kind of fell off a cliff midway through the season. No, the annoying thing with them is what Alabama team is going to show up, the one that beat Gonzaga? You know, didn't they beat Tennessee this year too? And Houston and Baylor. But then they they also have, like, horrible losses in there. And they're uh, they lost by 16 to A&M, who was snubbed from the tournament this year. I think we can all agree on that. Lost to Kentucky twice. Lost to Auburn twice, and they, I mean, it's not, not, not great. And they're 19 and 13. I would just expect, again, that games in California doesn't give advantage to either side. I just think this could be that game where, okay, if you get a Rutgers team that played well against Notre Dame, especially if they were able to get up on defense, I think, okay, they played more recently than Alabama, and I think they could maybe ride that ride that in and they're super super hungry like i seriously people Rutgers. it's not a pretty brand of basketball but it's kind of fun to watch because it is just physical physical ball so kel you can go ahead and mark the 11 to just win that one that is a-okay but we might have to go back and change that with notre dame wins because i'm not sure we feel the same notre dame beats Rutgers, and they're in that position do we We'll have to see how Notre Dame plays okay. Wednesday night at 9 o'clock, let me tell you. 9 o'clock game. Okay. So, but, next matchup, we have the Texas Tech Red Raiders versus Montana State. I mean, 14 threes are definitely possible upsets. They definitely are. But I'm going to stick with the Red Raiders here. Like, I, I, I think they'll blow them out. Alec, I will, you're the Big 12 guy here. That, that's fair. Well, I will start off by saying, you know what? I almost went and played football at Montana State. They recruited me fairly hard. Um, great little campus they got up there. But, uh, no, I'm riding the Red Raiders. I thought they'd win the Big 12. Um, they, offense is sometimes hard to come by for them, but they're always going to clamp you down on defense. And that type of team doesn't lose these games. So I'd move Texas Tech along. No, and before you before you say anything, real quick, uh, the notable losses from uh, m- notable results for Montana State are two losses: a blowout loss to South Dakota State and a loss to Colorado. So, B, go ahead. I'm per- I'm pretty sure all the starters for the starting five of the Red Raiders, besides one person, have played last year when they made a Final Four run, or was it a couple years ago? Couple Terrence years. Shannon and um. I mean, they're super physical. I mean, I was watching the game against Iowa State, and they made Iowa State look like just nothing. I A mean, physical team in their own right, too, Iowa State. Yeah. I mean, just ran up and down the floor, defensive stops. It, I mean, they made Iowa State work as hard as they possibly could get, even a decent-looking shot, and they just could not. I just don't think it's enough. I think Texas Tech, Kevin, just how you said, I think it's going to be a blowout. I wouldn't be surprised if they hold Montana's. Was it Montana State or Montana? Montana State. Montana State. I think they hold them under 45. I can, I can, see, it. I can see it happening. So the Red Raiders will advance to the second round. And now we look at the Michigan State Spartans versus Davidson, Steph Curry's alma mater. Oh, boy. You know what? I'm going to start this one off because Davidson is a hot team. They are super good. I know it's Tom Izzo and Michigan State in tournament time, and they're a seven seed, but good God, Michigan State got the shit end of the stick on this one. 
Yes, they I'm do. rolling with Davidson and the Wildcats in this one, and I honestly give them a huge shot to beat Duke the next round. I, I, I can't help but agree. I mean, you mentioned Tom Izzo and Michigan State, but have they been the same Tom Izzo and Michigan State in the tournament that we've expected them to be since the early 2000s? I don't think so. And Alec, as you mentioned earlier th- this year, they're lacking a killer, and that's what you need in, in, in tournament time. And when you have a team like Davidson, you need a killer. Wildcats advance. So this is one of the games I, I actually haven't made up my mind on yet, but I am going to give uh, my two cents here. I will say, at the moment on my bracket, I have Michigan State moving forward only because – I can't for the life of me eliminate Tom Izzo in the first round. I saw in the Big Ten tournament a team that was just, again, prototypical Izzo starting to wake up once the tournament's coming along. They played a great game against Wisconsin, and it's because they might be getting their killers. And that's in guard Tyson Walker, um, transfer in this year, had a great game against Wisconsin. They weren't scared at all of Purdue. Again, they play such a physical brand of basketball, and they throw huge bodies at you. Marble, Julius Marble is huge. If that guy decides that he's going to have himself a game in this game against Davidson, Davidson does not have the personnel to stop that. If Michigan State decides they want to get out on the perimeter like they did against Wisconsin and guard, Davidson's not going to be able to do anything about it. My – my holdup is, again, they have to decide they're going to do that. Um, another freshman to watch for Michigan State, Max Christie, if they get him going too, I mean, tall, lengthy guard who's shooting 40% for the Spartans, I believe. They could really, really, really bust some brackets here just the way Michigan State seems to do all the time. Um, I'm going to take Michigan State, but as we said, two or three vote moves Davidson on. And I don't have any problem with that. It could absolutely happen. They have so much good shooting on their team. They, they, they do. They have four players who average 11 points or more. They shoot 38% from three. They play tough defense. They create turnovers. It's just – they do everything. It's just they're not in a, in a, in a power five conference. That's why they're a 10 seed. Well, they, uh, they're, a, they're like a – they're a much lesser Iowa – and Iowa absolutely torched Michigan State from beyond the arc. Like it's so. It, oh man, they game, they torched them in general. They beat them by twenty six. Yeah, this game has a potential if Michigan State doesn't show up for Davidson actually winning fairly handily. Yeah. So now we move on to Duke, who will take CSU Fullerton, who beat my squad oh, Long Beach State in their respective conference tournament. You okay? Just, okay? Just, just, just hear me out on this game. Coach K, the past two big games he's had, he has choked. There's a small portion of me that he just goes out on a horrible note. Well, and he's he's Alec- he's blown these kind of games before. He did it against Lehigh. Now, this team doesn't have C.J. McCollum, but they're pretty good. Alec, you said, you know, you don't want to face a team that just lost – especially like Duke against North Carolina. I thought they were just going to blow through everybody in the ACC, but Virginia Tech had other plans and just made them look silly. I'm not saying they're going to, but there's just a tiny part of me that would not be surprised if C.S. Fullerton pulls this one out. But I'm going to go with Duke. I won't go as far as to say Cal State Fullerton winning. I could definitely see them, you know, being one of those games where they get up early and then Duke has to wake up. I think they will. Um, Cal State's good at baseball. This isn't baseball, so I'm moving Duke on. It's not baseball. We have a friend of mine who was at the ACC tournament. He watched every single game live. He told me he is not sure Paolo Banchero is that Banchero is that great of an NBA prospect. He just doesn't play consistently. He doesn't play stronger, strong enough. He, he could be the level of a Jason Tatum, but he doesn't seem to have the commitment. He gets lost in the shuffle, doesn't he? He does. Like, throughout the game, he's just kind of gone all of a sudden. Yeah. If, 
Again, we just talked about Michigan State, like, deciding to show up. If Ben Carroll decides to show up, there's really no team that should beat Duke on this half the bracket. But, I mean, you're looking at a year's worth of data points. So what do we have? He gets lost. So I, we just have to go based off of what we've seen so far. Yeah, so now we go, <clears throat> we, we're going to stay in the West. We're going to finish out the entire first round and then go back up. I stay, stay in the West. Stay in the West? B, stay in, stay the-, in the West? Yes, and I, I want to start out this Memphis Gonzaga thing because we saw what happened when Gonzaga plays someone who's physical, especially with Holmgren and Timmy. I know Alec, you gave me problems with it when I first said it. You guys both did not understand where I was coming from. Maybe I just didn't explain properly, but I think you guys saw it once they lost to St. Mary's. I feel like this game could be interesting, whether it's Boise State or Memphis. I just think Memphis is more of your physical team with Durant. I mean. You look at – like, you put them side to side, Holmgren and Durant. It's like DK Metcalf and then just some little preschool kid who's seven feet tall. I mean, the size difference is absolutely absurd. But I think Memphis matches up way better against Gonzaga. Um, if Memphis can slow down on the turnovers, I think they win this game. But I think Gonzaga wins just because it's Gonzaga and Memphis. It's just going to be one of those storylines where everyone's like, oh, they match up so well, but then they just don't show up. So I'm going to say Gonzaga moves on. Okay, well, I do agree Memphis is a really good matchup for Gonzaga. I do agree that they will keep the game close, but I am going to push Gonzaga past this round because they are just all-around great talent. They're coached really well, not to say that Memphis isn't coached well. They have Penny Hardaway, but Mark Few has been in this situation a lot more than Coach Penny has. Um, So I'm going to push them past this round. Um, But, uh, you know, maybe they don't survive past next round. So, if it's Gonzaga, Memphis, again, I, I moved UConn uh, or Boise State there. I'm a little more scared if it's Memphis. Um, as Brandon said, Memphis has big wings. Um, that presents a problem for Gonzaga. I personally, though, I don't see them being able to control turnovers. Um, this game's going to be played fast. Gonzaga likes to push the ball. And even if a team wants to slow them down, they're fine playing half court offense. They're, are they still, or they're the third most efficient offense in the country now, I believe, behind Purdue and Iowa. Yeah. They'll be fine. Um, I could see this being tight for a long time, but I think Gonzaga pulls away. I think they win by 10 points. I the game, the, sorry to interrupt, uh, Alec, but the game is also being played in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Oh, well, then, yeah, double it up. I, I just don't. That's just, it's difficult. It's difficult to travel halfway across the dang country. And Portland, I, I, I would think Portland might be, uh, gosh, where was it that um, the games played in, uh, oh, Denver. I hate when the games get scheduled in Denver because you get these West Coast teams who are playing at altitude versus teams from the East Coast. They get up there and they're just winded. Um, yeah. That could be a little bit of a factor for this game too. So we are pushing Gonzaga into the Sweet 16. Now we move on to the UConn-Vermont matchup. I think I think uh, we, we pushed Vermont past Arkansas last game. I, I pushed them past myself because Arkansas does not have a consistent offense. They cannot make shots. They have to like rely on rebounding and steals to score. Vermont does not turn the ball over, and they rebound very well. Now, UConn does not have to rely on steals and rebounds to win games. They keep it close. In a, they, they almost beat Villanova. They play in a very competitive Big East, in which they did really, really, really well, have great guard play, have great center play. I am pushing the Huskies past Vermont, but it will be in a very close game. I'm sorry to end Vermont's run here. I believe if they played almost anyone else in this bracket, they could probably go on. Oh, this is going to be – I hope we get this matchup because what a fun matchup of two Northeast teams playing in Buffalo. It, styles of play, it should be super, super, super close. Again, I agree with you, Kellen. I'm taking Connecticut, moving them on. Well, it sucks because I can't really give you an explanation because I had, like, none of these teams going on in the next round. I had New Mexico State and Arkansas. But since we're on the topic and we have these two teams, I honestly, I don't – know why UConn got the seed they did I don't like them offensively like whatsoever I just don't like they're super inconsistent if it was my pick right now and just from seeing the stats for Vermont I would say Vermont I would say Vermont goes on 
And I, I wouldn't pick. blame you. I wouldn't blame you. I, I 100% so, understand that pick. What seed do you think UConn should have gotten them, Brandon? A seven. A seven? A seven. There's How no you- – uh, honestly, it – so I'm already upset that Texas A&M did not get in. They looked absolutely dominant in the SEC. No, no, dude, that that's no. We, you right listen to me. Is, they are right where they should. Be. <laughs> no, 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 no. A&M should be in the tournament over Michigan. Fucking hands no. down. No, not at all. Does Michigan yet? Does Michigan deserve yeah. to be in, Alec? Come on. We're not even on that yeah. region yet. Doesn't matter that we, yes. we can still discuss the BS that is Michigan. No, we'll, we'll, we'll fight. We'll fight about next one. But a- anyways, no, I, I I don't like UConn at the five. I never liked them all year. I just think if this was the matchup, Vermont takes this one honestly. I, I just don't think UConn goes on. I don't even think honestly. I don't see them getting past the first round. But if they do, then that's it. They're 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 losing to whoever they're playing next. I don't care if it's Vermont or Arkansas. Be like I said, I really don't blame you. If Vermont is hitting their threes, they could win the game. I just think UConn is a is good enough defensively and more consistent offensively than Arkansas is, um, just to get past this round. Now we move on to Rutgers. And what I'm going to say is momentum is a huge thing for March Madness. So if Vermont beats Arkansas and they are hot, they will continue that against UConn. That's it. Okay. Rutgers versus Texas Tech. I'm going to let someone else take this one off the bat uh, because, like I said, I've I've done the past couple. I I will take this one. I am going to go Texas Tech against – if it is against Rutgers, what a slugfest that game would be. That would be super fun to watch. That would be one where I hope the refs let them play because that would be a super physical game. I'm taking Texas Tech because, again, I felt something with this team – for most of the year, they seem like a really hungry team, especially after losing the Big 12 tournament. That's danger. That a, a team on a mission is dangerous. Their style of play historically advances teams in the NCAA tournament. I'm moving Texas Tech on just because I think, even though they play similar, I think Texas Tech has the better athletes and a little bit deeper of a team. I'm going to say something prematurely before we get to this portion of the bracket. I actually have Texas Tech as a Final Four favorite just because of the way they play and how consistent they can be on the defensive side. Even if they're not hitting their shots, they can completely lock you down on defense. And if Rutgers is playing the exact same way, I mean, we could be looking at a final score of like 47 to 44 and just a slugfest, like you said, Alec. And we won't be able to tell if there's blood on the jersey or if it's just the red in their colors. So I'm excited. Texas Tech wins this one by a long shot. And okay. what might mean a long shot? Two points. So Texas Tech is a foregone conclusion to move to the next round, but I do have Rutgers winning this game. Uh, Brandon, as you just mentioned, uh, you know, momentum is a huge thing in college basketball. And I think if they go on to beat Notre Dame and they go on to beat Alabama, they're already hot. They're already feeling themselves, and they're going into Texas Tech. Everyone's counting them out. It's be a slugfest, as we mentioned. Rutgers is used to playing Big Ten bully ball, so I think they'll be they'll do just fine against Texas Tech's strength offense. I I see Rutgers going to the Sweet Sixteen. It could definitely happen. Uh, like I said in the game above, or when Rutgers is playing Notre Dame, if Prentice Hub is able to hit contested shots, that's their shot. Geo Baker and Ron Harper Jr. can pull off that kind of offense. They they don't need to have a play work for those two to score. So that if Rutgers is able to do that, they'll win. I just don't see it. Well, well no, and, and I also want to say Rutgers uh, has some of the best wins in college basketball this year. They've oh, beaten yeah. Purdue. They've beaten Michigan State. They've beaten Wisconsin. I mean, they constantly played insanely well against the top teams in the Big Ten. And I – they faltered against the lesser teams, which is why they're an 11 seed. But I think they rise to the occasion. They had some of those losses really, really early. Like, it's, yeah. it's a different team. And they, they will fight tooth and nail and claw. Their problem is they're, also, they're playing a team similar. <laughs> and I'm cheering for Rutgers in this turn. I would love to see Rutgers go as far as they can. It'd be a great story. But I think it ends there against Tech. All right, so now we move to Davidson versus 
Dude. Oh, God. No, this is David versus Goliath right here. And I love this matchup. Like, I do. You have both teams from Carolina in here. Davidson, I'm going to go with the freaking upset, the 10 over the two. I think Duke is one of the weakest upper seeds in this whole tournament, along with Baylor. Just like you said, Alec, with your buddy Jack about Paolo Ben Carroll, I honestly believe everything he said in Ben Carroll. I don't trust him at all. I'm so pumped for this bracket thing. I don't like if you guys can't tell. I think Davidson is a Cinderella team also in this region. This region I thought was the best region there is. There's so many Cinderella teams and lower seeds that can make a run. But yes, the Wildcats are winning. Brandon? I agree. <laughs> Paolo Bancaro does not play consistent bas- bas- uh, basketball. Duke has not played consistent basketball. They got absolutely walloped by Virginia Tech. They lost their last home game at Cameron Indoor. They were just not great against teams. They should have just blown out. And now you're going to get up against one of the hottest teams in basketball in Davidson, who's a fantastic fantastic three-point shooting team, which is something that I look for in teams in the tournament because if you can shoot threes and you can play moderately okay defense, you tend to go on a bit of a run. So I am sticking with the Wildcats. The Wildcats will advance on to the Sweet 16 to play Texas Tech. Alec, how you feel? I love the pick. I can totally see it. This this game is this is a March Madness game. I Again, I don't know what the hell it is about it, but it, it looks so juicy. I'm going to be the contrarian, just for the podcast's sake. I'm, I just want to know, you know, what, what is the Krzyzewski effect on the players? Is Mike Krzyzewski's last ever March Madness, you know, a motivation, especially after a loss um, in the ACC championship game? Or, you know... Is it added pressure to these guys knowing they're the last line of this indelible legacy? I'm going to take Duke only because I would think if I was a player, I'd be doing anything I possibly could to make sure I'm not the team that lost in Mike Krzyzewski's last season. And I think that's going to be enough to get them past Davidson. Um, like you guys said, if Davidson wins this game, I will not be shocked one bit. It can absolutely happen. I look in this game for people like uh, Wendell Moore, uh, maybe to play some good ball. Um, I think Ben Carroll will rise to the occasion. I, I think Duke wins. It's going to be by the skin of their teeth, but I'm going to take Duke. But by a two to three vote, we're moving Davidson on. And I don't have a problem with that at all. Kellen, last thing. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that game, if it does happen, will be taking place in South Carolina, which means you could have a 50-50 crowd split and just that arena erupting, which would be fantastic. If the matchup matchup does occur, it will be in Greenville, South Carolina. It's going to be such a great game. I mean, that that, either matchup, you either get Michigan State – versus Duke or Davidson versus Duke. You can't yeah. ask for more. You, you either get Tom Izzo versus Coach K, and Coach K is guaranteed last year. I'm not sure Tom Izzo's going to retire, but we're definitely getting close. Um, yeah, no matter what happens, I mean, it's March. No matter what matchup you get, you're almost likely to have a fun time watching the game. Now, we move to the West's Sweet 16. Holy crap, this is taking forever. Gonzaga or UConn? All right. Let's quick pick. Gonzaga. I'll take Gonzaga over UConn in this one. I am taking the Huskies. Yes! 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 Everything yes, Kellen. And you know why? You want to know why? Because this team, I don't know what it is. They are starving. They are starving for success under Danny Hurley. Dan Hurley injects so much energy into this squad. And this is going to be a game where Gonzaga will come to play, but UConn is going to fight. They are going to get so nasty because their coach gets nasty. 
And that's what you need to beat Gonzaga. I could definitely see this being a St. Mary's type of game for UConn. And I have UConn knocking off Gonzaga. All righty. Alec, thank you so much. I'm glad I wasn't the only one that picked the Huskies. Now we go to the Red Raiders versus the Davidson Wildcats. God, I mean, offensive and defensive. Which one is going to win? And I, like I said, I love Texas Tech's defense. Just Terrence Shannon. I, I can't think of the guy down low. I think he's 22. He's like what? He's a uh, – He's foreign guy, isn't he? Angel Silva. Is that what it is? Or Dos De, De Silva or whatever it is? Something like that. Anyway, I love Texas Tech's defense. I think their defense leads them all the way to the final four. I'm taking Texas Tech over Davidson. The story ends for the Wildcats. Alec, you go ahead. I'll go last. Same thing. I think defense wins the game here. Tech's defense is good enough to stop Davidson and their offense. They'll be able to find enough in this game. Absolutely. There's a reason the slogan is defense wins championships, and that's because it does, especially in March Madness. Now you're having the two things I always look for, defense and three-point shooting. This time defense will prevail. Now we decide who's going to the Final Four out of the West. Is it UConn or is it Texas Tech? Brandon, we know who you're choosing, so just go out and say it. Freaking Red Raiders all the way. Final Four, here we go. This is not even going to be a contest. Even if it's UConn or Gonzaga, I think they're just going to shut them out completely. Texas Tech, Red Raiders, on to the final four you go, young fellas. Alec, go ahead. I have Texas Tech as well. This is where it ends here for the Huskies. Going to be a hell of a game, really physical game, but Texas Tech will move on. Again, that loss they had in the Big 12 championship, I think, is what's going to propel this team into the final four. I am going to disagree with you both just for the sake of diversity here. Um Look, if UConn goes on to beat Gonzaga, the number one seed, they're going to be riding high. And I, I think they could take that high far enough to the Final Four. Alec, you said they're hungry. They'll stay hungry after that win. Um, but, like, a and probably, probably going to win. Not a and Texas Tech, Jesus Christ. On to the East after we have Texas Tech coming out of the West. Baylor versus Norfolk State. I mean, that's easy. How many times have I seen Norfolk State be a 16 and just never even think about them? Move on. Yep. Yep. Okay. A little more difficult game. This is North Carolina versus Marquette. North Carolina's second year in a row being in the 8-9 game. They also faced a Wisconsin team last year in the Badgers and got blown out by like 40 or something like that. I think it won't happen again. Because the North Carolina Tar Heels have the caveman, and that dude is an absolute baller. J- Kellen, just like you said, Brady Manick is a three-point wizard. I love his shot. If he is on, he is not missing. He reminds me a lot like um, Marcus May that was there with that group with the freaking dark black beard and the hair. He's always shooting. But also, I think it comes down to Armando Baycott. He is a great guy in the paint. He can just kind of control the paint on his own. If those two are on, this is not a contest. Tar Heels – Go with Hubert Davis. Hubert Davis, great job filling in for Roy Williams this year. Well, and he's he's done it while completely changing how the entire team is run. They're a very pick-and-roll oriented offense, and it's worked. I think this game is – this truly is a coin toss. Um, Marquette could easily win the game. I'm going to take North Carolina, though, because, as you said, um, Caleb Love – or no, you guys said Brady Manic. I totally see – Brady Manic is definitely a tournament guy. I almost equate him – what was uh, that guy's name several years ago for Carolina? May? Yeah. yeah, Marcus May. I see. He's like the same player in my mind. I think less physical. Um, but for what he doesn't bring on defense, he's going to have shooting the basketball. And if, if Carolina gets contributions from Caleb Love, like that's a point guard that can lead you. Like that – this – March is all about either, as Brandon said, you have a team that can play lockdown D. You have an elite guard who can take over a team. We've seen it umpteenth times. Kemba Walker and uh, Shabazz Napier for UConn took much lesser teams further. Um, Or you just get super, super, super scalding hot from three as a team. I think this is a game where Carolina's guard, they have the elite guard. They're going to win the game. 
and like I said, then you add Baycott in there. It, the talent's there, much like Michigan State. If they piece it all together, look out. I got some big plans for that. All right, so we all agree with the Tar Heels moving forward. Now we have St. Mary's versus the play-in Wyoming and IU. As we did for the Notre Dame Rutgers, we will choose that game first. I have the Hoosiers and Mike Woodson. They're on a tear right now. They're playing some really good basketball. They have the best defense in the Big Ten. They struggle scoring, but so is Wyoming most of the time. So I'm choosing IU. I So – Outside of Keegan Murray for the Big Ten tournament, Trace Jackson Davis has been the hottest player in the Big Ten. Absolutely no question about it. That was one hell of a game to watch this past weekend. The Hawkeyes and Hoosiers, it was great. Congrats. Joe Bo with the three from deep. Bank was open on Sundays. Loved it. But you know what? I was riding high still. I think they just control this game throughout. I love what Xavier Johnson has been doing also on the offensive side. If he can stay on, this team is very difficult to beat. So IU wins this one. Xavier Johnson is IU's X factor, as Brandon just said. Trace Jackson Davis has finally realized if he wants to dominate, he's going to dominate anybody he goes up against. His game is is very limited game. It's hard for him to go to the right. He almost always has to go to the left, and it does not matter a bit. If he gets you on the block, it's over. It is over. I don't see Wyoming being able to handle him. Um, as Kellen mentioned, though, IU simply cannot shoot the basketball. Um, that will somewhere down the line knock them out. It's not going to be in this game. Um, I, I, like, I like X, as Brandon said. I like Trace Jackson Davis. And I like um, – what's his name? Other big man, Ford for IU. Why am I drawing a blank here? Stewart. Nope, Stewart's a good three-point shooter. But Galloway? Uh, I like Galloway, but the forward, the other big man. I can't think of his name. I, I know who you're dude, talking about. I, love, I always know his name until right now I have to say it, and I can't. I'll come back to it, but IU's not going to lose to Wyoming, and mainly because I want to cheer for IU in the game, so I'm going to pick IU. All righty, so a unanimous Race Thompson. I. Sorry, Race Thompson. Unanimous IU. Now, I have been a defender for St. Mary's all year because Brandon has shat on St. Mary's. But I think IU pulls the win. Conversation for a different day. Never shat on St. Mary's. Yes, you you shat Um, on the entire WCC. Yeah, because it's garbage. But different conversation for a different day. But I – I love St. Mary's. I love that they're a five seed. I just absolutely love that they're a five seed. I think Kusi down low is great. He can stretch the floor. He's a better shooter than Trace Jackson Davis. If you can bring Jackson Davis out from the paint, that creates so much of their dribble drive penetration that they ran against Gonzaga. Against Gonzaga. That worked so well. I think this matchup bodes well in St. Mary's favor. I think the Gales move on to the next round, beating the Hoosiers. <clears throat> I do not have St. Mary's moving on. I have the Hoosiers moving on. My my quarrel right now, though, as I think about it, IU will have played so many games. So they they played three in the Big Ten tournament, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Now they have to turn around and play Tuesday in Dayton. They win that game. Where is this game? Is this game in Portland as well? This game is in Portland, Oregon as well on Thursday. So they win Tuesday. They have to fly around or turn around, get on a plane, fly out to Portland and play a super talented St. Mary's team that hardly has to travel. I mean, that is a tall order. I'm going to take IU again only because the team finally realized they're good. They got the talent. I'm scared for IU because they have consistently shown they do not know how to close a damn game. They yep. didn't against Iowa. They let Iowa go back and snatch it right from at the end. But, again, I would like to root for IU, so I'm going to take IU, and I don't see any reason why they couldn't beat St. Mary's. Cool. So we have the Hoosiers over the Gales. Now, this game really doesn't need any deep diving. At least I don't think it does. UCLA versus Akron. Oh. I have I have UCLA all day. Akron's really, uh, really freaking good. I have UCLA all day. 
Like it, I, I have UCLA winning, but for we, we need we need to give Akron just like a, a tiny moment of, of praise here. They're a damn good team out of the MAC. The MAC has proven over the years now to stand up plenty fine to these like blue blood teams. We saw Ohio win last year over Virginia. Um, Akron's of the same mold, except they have bigger, more athletic wings than Ohio did. There's no reason they can't win. But UCLA is a four seed with that talent. Dangerous. Yeah. UCLA is set up really nice. I have UCLA winning. I'm not going to go to any more. I I do appreciate because I I have watched some of Akron's highlights in some of their games. They are really good. But it's a Mac going up against a Pac-12 up-tempo team that just seems when they're on, they're just not missing at all. I mean, the whole team, if they're on, they're like no one's missing at all. I mean, heck, as junior, Campbell, Juicing, there's just too many guys to try to cover. I just think UCLA runs away with this one before even it hits halftime. Yeah, the reason I said there's no further explanation, it's just because, like Brandon said, UCLA, when they're on, are unstoppable just about. Um, we'll get to that on Wednesday. Um, and they're hot right now. They, they, they've been on a crazy run up until the Pac-12 championship. And Akron, sure, they're, they're good. But they're not UCLA. UCLA is loaded on all fronts. Um, and I, I, just, I just see the Bruins taking it here, and I think they're going to run with it for a while. Now we move to the Longhorns oh, versus God. the Hokies. I, I love this freaking game. So Kellen, do I. I know you're about to say that. I'm sorry I cut you off. But this game has got the potential to just be like one of those uh, like buzzer beater to send it to like a third overtime game. I love this game so much. And honestly, I'm going to stick with my gut. I think Virginia Tech comes out. And I honestly think we might see like a double overtime game. I'm going to say the Hokies win. I don't see a double overtime game. I see a blowout game that ends in regulation with the Hokies just dominating Texas. Texas has been an insanely inconsistent team, a team that I have not liked all season. I think I voiced my opinions on Texas earlier uh, this month, but I'm not sure. I don't like Texas. I don't like Chris Beard. Um, That's their head coach, right? Just confirming that is their head coach. Cool. Um, And the Hokies are probably the hottest team in college basketball right up with, with Davidson. I mean, they blew out just about everyone. In the ACC, I mean, they made Duke look like they're freaking nobody. Uh, the Hokies advance here, man. I see it. We're, we're looking again at a good defensive team in Texas. Uh, Chris Beard was the coach for Texas Tech when he took them to the Final Four against a dynamic offense um, in Virginia Tech who is just flying as high as you could. Y- you maybe wonder about an, an emotional letdown. I had a great take. Um, on CBS today about, okay, you go from basically playing in Brooklyn, getting super hot against all these good ACC teams, playing Duke in a championship game in Krzyzewski's last year, beating them. And now you have to go to Milwaukee Milwaukee, where it's not close to either fan base. Like this is going to be Virginia Tech's toughest game um, for that reason. Coming out of the ACC tournament, though, um, Justin Mutz impressed me so much. Dude's a dog. The other guy that I'm, like, super high on just feels like that tournament guy as well. Super tiny. Gives me hope. 6'1", Sean Padula. He's a freshman. He's a freshman. He looks so small out there. Dude's knocking down shots everywhere. Virginia Tech's going to be too much for Texas in this game. I don't feel any energy coming from Texas. Neither, neither do I. I just want to throw this out. Versus top 25, Texas has played more top 25 teams, but they're 3-8. and eight. Virginia Tech is 2-3. and three. And even though Virginia Tech is an 11 seed, they have the BPI ranking of 19, while Texas as a 6 seed is 18. In conference, Virginia Tech is better. They score more points per game. It, everything is leading towards Virginia Tech winning this game, and they're 23-12. and 12, And I think it's absurd that they had to win the ACC to make the tournament. Well, and they're an 11 seed only because they started out the year so shitty. Yeah. Sorry, pardon my French. They, the last half of the year, they were super, super freaking good. So their record's a little bit skewed. Yeah. Uh, so we all unanimously <laughs> pick Virginia Tech. Now they move to the Purdue Boilermakers versus the Ivy League champs, Yale. 
hey, you know what? Don't underestimate the Bulldogs here, okay? They always play a team close in the first round. They don't win the first round, but they always play them close. And if Purdue is not on, this could be one of those games where everyone's like, what the hell did Purdue just do? Like, I can see it being one of those games. Well, that happens I'm to say Purdue, Purdue every year, so I wouldn't be surprised. I'm going to say Purdue prevails just the first round here against the Bulldogs. I think it'll be a very physical game because Yale plays a same type of Big Ten ball as anybody right now. And I love this matchup. It's going to be a close one, but Purdue pulls this one out. I think Ivy has a career type of day for in order for them to win this game. Yeah, Yale might play Big Ten ball in terms of they slow the ball down, but they don't play Big Ten ball in terms of 7-4, 6-11 front court with, like, one of the best, most dynamic guards in the country. Did you guys see Ivy's behind-the-back Euro step, like, finish against Michigan State? What the freak was that? It's beautiful. That's, that is alien talent right there. Purdue's going to win this game. I don't believe this Yale team – is like the the Princeton, Harvards, or Yale teams of the past that have come out in the Ivy League. So I think Purdue wins comfortably. Uh, I do say Purdue wins comfortably as well. Yale has pretty good defense. They have some very solid guard play, but that's also good defense and solid guard play for the Ivy League. Purdue is just a good team in general, playing one of the toughest uh, conferences uh, in the nation. It's got it's, – it's got to be Boilermakers, right? You would hope so. You would hope so. Now we move on to my – this is the toughest match in college basketball right now. I, I, I've i partially decided, but not really. Murray State versus San Francisco. Alec, I will let you go with this one. This is one of the best first round matchups, I think, out there. I'll start off with that. Um, both teams, I mean, you you really wish, and I, I've heard this echoed today from pundits, but I thought the same thing yesterday. You really wish they weren't playing each other, like that they had a chance to go beat some big teams because these two teams could for sure knock off several of these other like name brand squads out here this year. I'm going to take 30 and two Murray State to win, mainly because the game is in Indianapolis. Like again, you, you have to put um, venue into the formula here in some way, shape, or form. And I think that's going to be enough for Murray State to win. I love this matchup. We have two teams that play up tempo, which means we could see a very high scoring game, just a lot of action. I love San Francisco. They did not show up against Gonzaga like I thought they were going to, but they do play well against the bigger teams. But Murray State looks phenomenal. I'm surprised they only got a seven seed. I honestly could see Murray State making a huge run in this region. Um, I'm going to go with Murray State as well, but I think, I mean, it will be a close game, but I think we could be seeing both teams pushing 80 points both like both ways. I mean, this is going to be a great game to watch. It, it's definitely going to be an electric back and forth game, in my opinion. And it's I, how, how can you not choose a 30 win college basketball team in round one? Like, like I, I give San Francisco its due. You know, they played really well in the, in the West Coast Conference, uh, at least regular season wise. It's hard to play against Gonzaga in general. Um, but I'm going to go Murray State as well, unanimous Murray State. Go Ramblers, John Morant's uh, alma mater. It's nice to see them back and, and kicking butt. Uh, now, unanimous Kentucky. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to choose St. Peter's. So. <laughs> we don't even need to explain this one. This is all good to go. Yeah, you know, okay. The Peacocks, what's their emblem, though? It's got to it's gotta be the Peacocks. I, I've looked at it. I don't know what else it could be. That's got to be a peacock, right? That's so sick. I, I, God. I'm at, uh, like, it is pretty cool that you have the balls to be a peacock in college basketball. That, that's like, I need to get some merch from that school. But let's go. Any St. Saint, any Saint Peter's uh, colleagues or admins want to send us some gear, we are more than willing to accept it. We will accept oh. it, and we will 100% wear it with pride. Absolutely. Now we move on to Baylor, North Carolina. I, it's, it's Baylor. I'm going to go Baylor. Ooh, see, okay, I'm going to disagree with you on this one. I think Baylor is the absolute weakest top seed in this entire tournament. They are so injury prone. Um, 
and this matchup against North Carolina it is perfect for North Carolina. I mean, I love Akinjo. I love Jeremy Soshan. Um, and I love some of the other boys on Baylor, but the injuries have plagued them way too much. They are not playing consistent ball. I watched that game in the Big 12 tournament. They did not look good at all. This is a matchup for North Carolina to take advantage of. Stretch the floor. Like I said, this is going to come down to Armando Baycott. I think he has a 25-10 and 10 game. North Carolina goes on to beat the Baylor Bears. That's a big game for Baycock, man. I agree with Brandon. Shit. I agree with Brent. This game for Baylor, it's again. I they kind of, they really got screwed. The thing is, North Carolina has to get past Marquette. That's their difficult game, in my opinion. This game, as Brandon just said, sets up perfectly. They have the front court to to be better than Baylor in the front court, which is hard to do. Um, and then Baylor, as Brandon said, that has so many injuries right now. Their leading scorer, we don't know if he's going to play in the dang game. Crier. Um, why it, Why wouldn't that be a problem for any team, regardless of what your seed is? And then uh, Jonathan Chumwa Chachua, or whatever, how do you pronounce his name? He's not playing. So, like, this sets up perfectly for North Carolina to win this game, and I, I fully expect them to. I understand those concerns, but I just want to say Baylor has still played pretty damn good ball while dealing with a lot of these injuries all year. No, no, year. Pryor, Pryor was on the team. No, no, but 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 they, they they've yet. still had injury issues though. They've still but, been missing a lot of players. But they always had Cryer. I know, but if, if they're missing like two two to three other role players, that still hurts a lot. That's all I'm saying. I, 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 I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you completely. I'm saying that's 100 percent a possibility, and I'm saying that even if Baylor were to get to next round, I would have them losing. So it doesn't matter. God, we are in full March Madness mode, and I freaking love it. Let's go on to the next matchup. Ukla. So what is it, agree. Iowa – or, I mean, sorry, I, IU, IU and UCLA. Do, do, so, we, do we really think – I mean, IU is a great defensive team, but no. UCLA is so deep de- offensively and they play great suffocating defense. Do we really say the Hoosiers beat the Bruins here? Two no. great 70s squads, and it's great to get them play each other at this point. That would be awesome. The, this is but, where guard play wins the game for UCLA. This is where Tiger Campbell comes into play here for, for this game. And as I said – IU does not knock down outside shots. They they can't go too far in the tournament. This is where it ends for them. This is where my St. Mary's pick comes in. I think if St. Mary's is in this position, St. Mary's has the better matchup, and they can shoot the three way better. And I honestly would love – I mean, I honestly think St. Mary's would win this matchup. If they can shut down Campbell and just have Ju Sang scoring – that's fine on their end. At least they're holding everyone else because that's what they did with Gonzaga. I'm pretty sure it was just Strother, but they got Timmy and Holmgren completely just done, and Nembard had nothing. But we are on IU and UCLA. I don't see IU hanging with UCLA at all. I think UCLA bumps up the tempo quite a bit to wear out IU a lot, and I don't think it's going to be close. And, and as we said, Jaime Jaquez is finally playing like he was during their run last year. And for this matchup specifically, transfer Miles Johnson from Rutgers has seen Trace Jackson Davis multiple times before, and he's a super, super physical player. Absolutely. He, he won't UCLA. Davis down, but yeah, UCLA win. Bruins push on. Now we have the Virginia Tech Hokies versus – the Purdue Boilermakers. I am hoping by the tone of my voice and the amount of pauses I am putting in between all of my words helps you understand that I am choosing the Hokies. This game is going to be good. Um, Just like you said, I loved watching, what what was it, Justin Metz you said, Alec? Yeah, Metz. Much. He was fantastic on both sides of the ball. If he wasn't scoring, he was either blocking, stealing, or getting rebounds. That game against Notre Dame, he had what like five blocks, four steals. He had a double double. Um, even if they, even if he doesn't score and just plays defense on Edie or Trayvon Williams the entire time, which he could easily stop both of them. I mean, he's got the type of strength to hold them out of the paint. What worries me is the guard play when it comes to Virginia Tech. This is where I think Padula kind of gets his freshman. Uh, welcome to the show, young man, type of thing. I think Purdue 
walks away with this one. It's going to be very physical in the paint, but I think this is another Ivy game, but I would not be surprised to see Stefanovic showing up in this game, having about 15 plus and mainly all of his shots coming from deep. That's going to happen in one of their games. And, and if, when it does, like that's when it's so hard to beat Purdue. They're so multiple. Um, I don't see this being blowout by any means. I think Mutz again presents a problem because he'll he'll pull uh, like an Edie out from under the hoop. Edie has to, or else Mutz is going to score on the jumper. Um, Travion Williams, though, I, Mutz may be able to stop one of them. He's not going to be able to stop both of them. I mean, Purdue can just lean and lean and lean on you. One of those two is going to have a big game. I think it's going to be Williams, and exactly like you said, Brandon. Vatex guards, I mean, most of this field's guards are in for just like a problem when they run into Jaden Ivey. It's, it's one thing in the Big Ten where teams figured out how to play him, how to shut Purdue down. If this is your first time seeing this team with their size and that athleticism at guard, it's so hard. It would be so Absolutely. Hard. I, I, Sorry, Kellen, two to one. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. I really didn't have an exact reason as to why I was picking Virginia Tech besides Purdue often chokes in the tournament. This is what my friend Andrew has told me since seventh grade. They have all the players. They have the coaching. There's no reason they should lose, but it appears some basketball god just wants them to. That's what happens every year for, for Purdue. That's the really the main reason I have Virginia Tech advancing, um, but I'm, I got no problem pushing Purdue forward. We have the Battle of Kentucky here. Awesome. Love Murray it. I State, freaking love it. Kentucky. Murray State's going to be hungry. They're going to be they're going to want to show how much better they are than Kentucky. That Kentucky is their state. And they will come out with the victory over the Wildcats in Indianapolis, Indiana. Alec, I'll, I'll let you go. I'll finish it up. That, that arena is going to be nuts for Murray State, Kentucky. I don't know, too, if, like if, if the other teams playing in Indianapolis, like this Indianapolis like spot is perfect for all the teams playing there. They're, it's the most local teams in that little bracket there. So it's going to be hype. It's going to be electric, going to be a great game to watch. I just don't think Murray State has an answer for Shibwe, so I'm going to go Kentucky. I love you brought up Shibwe because that dude is an absolute monster on the boards. He's just a mammoth of a man in general. I mean, he's just a big guy. I love Murray State's pace. I love their tempo, but I've seen what Kentucky can do. Yes, they did not do well in the SEC tournament, but I feel like it almost boded well for them to not win the championship at this time. Um it's it's going to be a great game. Like, honestly, it's really going to be, like, one of those great games to watch. I just think Kentucky squeaks it out. I don't think it's going to be a comfortable win, but it's going to come down to, like, free throws. Wildcats go on. This It's going to be great. I wish I could go. I wish I could go to this game. I, I just want to say I'm, I'm picking Murray State because I think just in general they play better team ball than Kentucky does. Kentucky is a, is a solid team. Like, a solid – they have players. They have really good players. I'm not sure they play as well as a cohesive unit. I, I'm going to point to the Arkansas game in which they lost. Yeah, I hope, I hope I'm saying his first name correct here. Savir Wheeler? Oh, Kentucky, wow. Kentucky's, Kentucky's point guard, starting point guard. When they were down to Arkansas, he panicked, and he tried to play superhero ball, and, it, and he fell incredibly flat. And I think if Murray State just keeps it moderately close in the first half, he's going to think he has to play a superhero ball and he's going to cost Kentucky the game. I can totally see that happening. Last thing, though, I, I will say I would not be surprised if Murray State wins this game, but I'm just saying, as just for what we're talking about right now, Kentucky's winning. All right. Now we're deciding who we are pushing to the Elite Eight. The North Carolina Tar Heels versus the UCLA Bruins. Another blue blood battle that Look I'm at those four teams. excited to see. Look at those four teams. That's fantastic. I love it. That's, those I love four it. teams, like college basketball, is built upon those four teams. Yeah. Are you kidding me? The region of the blue blood. And, and none of it. them are a one seed. Yeah, that's insane. That is insane. 
Uh, I yeah, go ahead, B. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to say I still think that the momentum rides high with the Tar Heels. I'm telling you, I think this team is very underrated in this tournament. Um, if they can get out, like Alex said, if they can get past Marquette, then they, I feel like, have a huge advantage of going on to the Final Four. And I think they continue here. And I still think it comes down. I think this time it will be Caleb Love Show and Mannix. I think they will find a way to kind of isolate Baycott down low. But I think Caleb Love comes on. I think the Tar Heels move on. Hubert Davis, take your boys to the Elite Eight. Well. I am a big fan of momentum. I don't think momentum is going to be that strong in North Carolina's favor. I mean, I, they're battling hard against Marquette. I think if they win against Baylor, they're battling hard against that. Now they have to play UCLA in Philadelphia, so it's, it's, it's a more neutral site game. But I've said this multiple times just to this one video. UCLA is so insanely deep when it comes to offensive scoring uh they're they're solid enough on defense the Bruins I I love them not really I I I dislike Johnny Juzang to a point that makes me want to see them fail but as a team I think they are really good and cohesive and I think they will push past the Tar Heels this game is is love versus Campbell this excellent guard play I mean, you cannot ask for much more than North Carolina playing UCLA in a sweet 16 that that early on in the tournament. I I am moving UCLA on. That's what I have on my bracket. I could flip a coin, though. I mean, this game is just going to be back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I don't see any team getting any kind of separation. Um, I'm just going to ride the tournament experience that UCLA has from last year. And again, with Jaime Jaquez playing well again, they're a different team. He needs to play well in this game to win, and I think he will. All right, so a two-to-one advantage pushes the Bruins past the Tar Heels. And now we move to a game between three and two Purdue Boilermakers and Kentucky Wildcats, respectively. Oh, my God, this is a tough game because I can either choose the guard play, which I personally don't have much favor in in Kentucky. They try to play superhero ball or I go with a Purdue team that often chokes in these kind of situations and a team that I I haven't trusted a lot uh, since their start of Big Ten play. I mean, I'm a Penn State fan. So I watched that entire game. They played horribly. They were not good. And Penn State's not a good basketball team. So I'm going to go with the uncertain guard play over a team that I don't trust. So I'm taking the Kentucky Wildcats. Alec, go ahead. I'm going to take Purdue. Be- Again, this game, coin flip to me. There's... I mean, both teams have elite bigs. Um, both teams, for for as inconsistent as Kentucky is, they always have elite guards. Um, Purdue has the advantage in Jaden Ivey. I'm going to take Purdue saying that again, if Purdue is hot from three, they are almost impossible to beat. If Stefanovic can hit his first shot, look out. I'm going to take Purdue. I don't think... I, I think, Kellen, again, we have to be careful when we see Purdue play Big Ten teams because everyone's familiar with each other, and the Big Ten just becomes a meat grinder. It's hard to beat anybody in the league. Um, so I, I think, again, a team having to see Purdue for the first time on short notice is difficult, and Purdue's going to win. I would love – because I know, Alec, you have mentioned it numerous times before I know Kellen even mentioned it too after watching a Purdue game I will be interested to see how the refs call Edie and Shibway down low I mean this is going to be just a physical game down low Edie seven foot Shibway can just probably take on anybody in the world because of his size and his mass Um, I mean I'm going to say like over 20 rebounds for the both of them it's just going to be unbelievably rebounding the ball I just think Purdue has the better guards as of right now. I do like Ty Ty Washington for Kentucky. I do like Grady. 
Um, he's more of your stretch four position for Kentucky. I just don't think Kentucky is that good of a three point shooting team, which Alex, just like you said, if Stefanovic is on and if he's on, I mean, watch out. I mean, it's like JJ Redick at like at Purdue. Like he he just lights out. Well, uh, I'm gonna say you're. You're forced to spread the spread your defense out, then and then Jaden Ivy just goes to work. It's either him exactly. or Travion Williams gets one on one and it's done. This is going to be a very, I mean, this is SEC Big Ten basketball. This is going to be very physical down low. I just think Purdue wins this one, and it's it's not going to be a blowout. It's not going to be some runaway. It's going to be a very physical game. Okay, well, I'm kind of pissed because I've only had one team actually get selected over the past like seven games we've done. But I, I, I'm, I'm going to push to see if maybe I can get one of you to sway. Odds are it won't happen. Nope. Yeah, that's what I, I thought. But <laughs> you guys keep talking about Stefanovic. Dude was horrible in Big Ten play. He could barely make a shot. Do we really think he's going to turn it up that much over the next three games? I don't see it because if a shooter's cold, they're cold. They're not going to get any better with more pressure. Oh, shooter, he, shoot, man. He is he is different. He continues to shoot even if he is cold. And he continues it, to miss. No, but statistically, you're, you're exactly right, Kellen. He has been bad for two weeks, like bad. Career-wise, he is a sharp shooter. And a sharpshooter is only going to keep missing for so long. And it's just one of those weird things. I just think – I'm not – I don't think he does it against Yale. He could definitely do it two games in a row versus Botek in Kentucky. Uh, I'm just going to continue to point out Purdue constantly has the talent that always seems to get cold at the wrong time. And I think that's happening this year. And I think y'all are being a little blind to it. But we are going to push three-seed Purdue – over Kentucky as both of you jack wagons fix your hats at the same time. Now we get to see Ukla versus Purdue. I'm choosing the Bruins. I'm not going to explain because I've already explained seven freaking times at this point. You guys can both choose Purdue now just to ruin my day. Thank you very no. much. No, I'm going to agree with you. I think this is when Purdue chokes. I'm not saying they're like not going to choke. But this is the time that Purdue will choke. The biggest time possible, get into the Final Four. But you're facing UCLA. And where is this game going to be played at? Philadelphia? Philadelphia. I mean, just like Alex said, Tiger, Tiger Campbell is vastly underrated in the league. He is very, very good, very smart with the ball. I really believe UCLA wins this one. And I would not be shocked if it's one of those where they just kind of pulled away in the second half where it's like a 14 point victory in the end, but it's been close all game. I say UCLA wins this one final four for the Bruins. Yeah. Purdue's Purdue's advantage in Jaden Ivy is the the smallest in this game against Tiger Campbell. And then you look across the board, I think UCLA is the better team after that Uh, for as good as Travion Williams is again, um, Johnson for UCLA has seen both of these big men before. So he has an idea of their moves. He has an idea of what they like to favor. That's that's big time info for games like this. So there will be some familiarity there. And this is where Purdue's defensive metrics kill them. I mean, they, there's never been a team to win a national championship that's been what, – what was the number did you say, Kellen? It was 35 or 50. It was – no team below 60 has made the final four. And Purdue, I believe, has passed 100. 113. Yep. So this is where it ends. They won't stop UCLA. Iowa was able to pick Purdue apart this past weekend. I think UCLA can. Thank so don't call us jack wagons. We're not like – You are jack wagons. Against you, you are – I, 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 I think you discussed before the podcast. Let's piss off Kellen today. Let's do that. Come on, I moved UConn we on know. with you. Yeah, I'm but right I mean, I, I, I picked I picked Murray State. I picked Virginia Tech. I picked Baylor. Now you guys rode with me on UCLA, and, and I appreciate you for that. But you y'all 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 already dismissed my case to swing you for Purdue before I even made a point. So now coming out of the Listen West, this, how beautiful we're trying to help the beautiful people win some money here. Kellen, I was just about to get to your point because this is a great thing to see already. We have only finished one side of the bracket. We have a three-seed Texas Tech in the Final Four and now a four-seed UCLA. 
Love March, baby. I think Love this it. tournament is just wide open. There is not a single dominant team that can just completely run the f- table right now. I mean, this, it, this is going to be great to watch. I'm excited that we already have a three and a four in the final four. I cannot wait to get to the South and Midwest on Wednesday. Do you guys have anything else to touch on tournament-wise? Uh, tournament-wise, I don't believe I, I do. I do want to say I think the only one seed that's going to make the final four will be talked about tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Absolutely. Uh, last thing, there was the Players' Championship this weekend, and what an absolute horrible Mother Nature style of golf happening from Thursday until Saturday. Rained out, delayed. They, what, got the second round done on Saturday afternoon? I mean, that's yeah. how that worked. In a game of um, forced win. Yeah. Max Gus, a 40-mile – it was horrible to watch. What was it? Uh, 17, the little cutout of the water? Yeah. Yeah, just balls split. What, 28 were hit that day in the water, which was just absurd. But Kellen does get points because Victor freaking Hobbs yeah! changed his – changed his pick. Second Alec, we, change. Yeah, we agreed to that change. And he had Lee Westwood. Who was yeah. actually top time, 10 after day one. He was, and so was Zalatoris. Zalatoris was top five after day yeah. one, looking phenomenal. And then all of his momentum just got wiped just away. Got just absolutely but. got killed. Same with freaking uh, uh, – what's the other guy? Lanto Griffin was doing great. Oh, yeah. Him and Corey Connors killed. were neck and neck, man. And then Corey Connors stepped it up final day. I think he got the top 30 finish. But Steven Yeager, I don't know what that he was. He was 77th. But So here, here's really quick with this little tournament. Just to tell you how bad the win was, Justin Thomas, after his second round Saturday, he walked out with – I. I believe he shot two or three under, no bogeys on the day, which is outrageous for that amount of wind. Going in the 18, last year when he won it, he said his club choice on the par four 18 was five wood pitching wedge into the green. Same hole, the tee box was 40 yards closer to the green. He hit driver five wood to get to the green. That is how bad the wind was. And that's my congratulations. My players. Congratulations to Cameron Smith. I mean, he's been wish washy pretty much most of the year so far, but he gets the W there. Did you see how that ending happened? I mean, he was watching because I think the guy, I can't think of his name, it was some start with an L. Um, Lahiri? Is that he was about to, I don't know, but he was about to chip in to have a playoff happen because it was between Smith, him, and uh, I can't think of, uh, was it Paul Casey? Paul Casey was out there. I'm sorry. Um, it was great to watch today. I mean, I was watching it on the TV once I got back, but God, I would hate to play in that. That was horrible. The the nads too for Smith to hit the shot he does on 17, where he goes chasing the pin when it's tucked up on the right with an island green. There is no room for error in that shot. That is, I'm going for the win. He stuck it, and that's why he's a champion. Beautiful. And I'm pretty sure you were talking about it a couple weeks ago. They have a break now, right? And then they're on to another one next week. Yeah, I thought they had a little bit of a break, but maybe maybe they don't. I always thought they had it before, but I was wrong. So maybe uh, I would think most of the major players are going to take a, take a little reprieve anyway. So if we get a tournament. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint. Kellen took your player and got points with your player. Alec, you no. are still pointless after he didn't take like five the win, weeks. <laughs> he, he didn't pick Victor for his win. He backed out of a bad situation, which, you know what? I applaud you for understanding your mistake taking Lee Westwood. I was like, <laughs> what the shit are you doing? But it's not the big uh, one. I'm going to get Victor's big one. We're getting there, fellas. But I got hey, points. Play. You didn't. That's all that matters. Hey, watch out for the barn burner tomorrow. We have uh, Texas Southern and Texas A&M Corpus Christi tomorrow. 16 seeds playing. Give me Corpus Christi. Uh, I'm ready to go, boys. And don't forget, fill out your brackets. Join the Sharp Sports Report on ESPN Bracket Challenge. Winner will get to come on to an episode with us. Um, Also, some news. We have officially a sponsor. It is actually anchored by Spotify. So that is awesome news as well. I will say that we are working on getting our first guest 
actual guest on the show, and it is Nick Johnson, the president of the South Bend Cubs. We are hoping to get him on very shortly. Nick, um, not not his uh, name. Maybe he is what is it? Name. Nick Brown. Oh, it is Nick Brown. Nick well, Brown. I so feel like an asshole. Guest on the show Jeez. now. So if anyone wants to come Jesus. on, <laughs> Jesus. Um, how could you do that? <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I was. Oh my god. Anyways, don't even. Yeah. Anyways, you guys have a good night. I'm about to just get off. Yep, Brandon. You can leave. Um, I just want to say it's funny. Last episode we did, we talked about Tom Crean for about three seconds. Uh, later that evening, he was fired. So Tom Crean. You are horrible. And Mr. Brown, Wabash I do apologize. Basketball. Last thing, Wabash basketball advances to the final four in Division Three. Let's go, Wabash. First, actually, no, they have one national title in 82. They hadn't made it to the final four one other time other than that. They're on the ride. Matt Richter's got his team playing well. Wabash always fight. Go Hawkeyes. Love Big Ten Championship. Keegan Murray. Should be talked about for National Player of the Year. Johnny Davis getting Big Ten Player of the Year is ridiculous. Murray is now the third, has scored the third most points in a single season by a Big Ten player since 1970, behind only um, uh, Glenn Robinson and point guard for Purdue, Carson Edwards, a couple years ago. And he didn't win his conference as Player of the Year. That's out. about right. I, I, I want to throw out a trivia question. I want to see if you two guys could get it just real quick. What two teams in college basketball history have two national championships? There's only two teams with exactly There's only two teams with exactly two. No, no okay. more, no less. May I have a clue on is it is it one of the power six conference? One is it one is a power six conference, yes. Kentucky is the super obscure. Kentucky has eight. Yes, the other is super obscure, but they are indeed oh, oh, actually San Francisco. San Francisco is San one. San Francisco because they beat Iowa for one of them. That's the only reason I know that. San Francisco has one. And I'm gonna take is the other team in the field. The other team is indeed in the field. I'm going to say Villanova. Incorrect. Villanova has three. Oh, God. Brandon, what's your guess? Was Kentucky your, your legitimate guess? Because if no, so, that no, was pretty it was stupid. Not. No, it was not. Um, uh, Georgetown. It is not Georgetown. Georgetown has one. It's Michigan State. <laughs> I can't believe Alec got San Francisco. Uh, no, 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 Alec, you may have not gotten Michigan State, but the fact that you got San Francisco, I applaud you for that, sir. This is a heartbreaking loss back in the 50s for the Hawkeyes. That's all I'll say. I'll say also in the 50s, Loyola Chicago won a college basketball championship. So there's more facts for you. None of them really, really matter uh, unless you do some sports bar trivia. And for some reason, that's a question. I, Kellen Sharp. I'm here with Alec and Brandon. We thank you for listening, getting this far, hopefully, and give us your thoughts on the tournament and where you think we went wrong. Hopefully you criticize Alec and Brandon for choosing goddamn North Carolina over Baylor because that's just stupid. And you have a good day. Also, Mom, thank you for getting me a Dairy Queen Blizzard. It was really good.